Arab Dope covering. I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And of course, uh, Mike Pence comes out today saying that the United States did not give a green light to Turkey to invade Syria. Well, I guess in a way we could say that he's telling the truth because, of course, no, the United States did not. Whether or not President Trump gave him the green light or not, well, that's a different story altogether. Listen to this uh, just short clip here, what the Vice President Pence had to say. Well, the United States of America did not give a green light to Turkey to invade Syria. Hmm. The United States didn't. Well, that's true, because the majority of uh, Congress and Senate senators uh, believe that we have abandoned the Kurdish uh, uh, fighters that are inside of Syria. Uh, I know for one, I have never thought the United States should have been in Syria, but then again, we shouldn't have been sponsoring al-Nusra, al-Qaeda, nor the ISIS militants to overthrow this uh, uh, nation in the first place, working hand and foot with Prime Minister Netanyahu just to do exactly that. Uh, but I will say that the objective was reached. As we shared with you, the objective was to uh, free the ISIS militants, to be able to uh, allow the ISIS militants to regroup inside of Iraq. There have been many, many of the ISIS militants that have been freed uh, thus far uh, thanks to this initiative that was uh, started by President Trump. And of course, I know some would say, well, Trump didn't want to leave our 50 uh, some odd soldiers over there on the northern border to be ran over by Turkey. Turkey's not going to run over the United States military to start with. Uh, he's not going to do that unless we pull our troops back. And so, no, President Trump never intended to pull our troops out of Syria, only to pull them off the northern border, which is completely different from what he made it look like, especially the supporters of President Trump that were saying that uh, Trump was trying to keep his campaign promises. Uh, well, that's always interesting, too, you know, as you get ready to go into the year of election, right? Keep your campaign promises. No, he didn't keep campaign promises either. Totally different altogether. At any rate, uh, another thing that's going on, we mentioned to you guys about uh, the meeting there with uh, uh, the, of course, this is the, this is the United Arab Emirates uh, uh, prince that has gone now over to Tehran to meet in a secret mission there with uh, President Rouhani there. Uh, he is concerned that he might get shortchanged by, uh, uh, of course, uh, actually, no, that's the wrong image I'm looking for. I actually don't think I have it up here. Uh, but uh, he is worried about being shortchanged or, uh, uh, by uh, the meeting with the Pakistani prime minister that had just taken place and that uh, they might fall, uh, fall short when it comes to the Saudis. Now, I was, so one of the intel things that we were looking at is that the United Arab Emirates, they're trying to make peace with Tehran, uh, even though they, the Jordanians, the uh, uh, many other nations back when there was a war with Iraq and Iran, they were siding with Iraq against Iran. Uh, and when Iraq wanted to invade Kuwait, Iran was neutral in that there. But the, the, it comes down to this here. They're, they're trying to calm the waters with Iran. They're trying to, to settle these fears that have been going on and bring about some kind of stability in the Middle East there. Uh, whether or not that's going to happen or not, well, that just remains to be seen. Uh, another thing, too, that I wanted to bring to your attention, Rouhani regime uh, it says a regime has been involved in the attack on the Sabati uh, oil tanker and uh, he is stating in this article right here that the Iranians, they had cameras on the oil tanker they know that the rocket was fired from a boat uh, against their vessel there in the Red Sea, which is, as we mentioned to you before, pouring oil into the Red Sea there. Um, uh, it is, from what we have been uh, told, that the it is suspected that the ISIS uh, militants with Al-Qaeda militants that were trained by Mossad to carry out those attacks over in the Persian Gulf were the ones that actually carried out this attack in the Red Sea that crippled the tanker and caused this massive oil spill that is taking place even now. Uh, so I have to wait to see how that is going to play out. And of course, that's another reason why we think the United Arab Emirates uh, Prince is meeting with uh, the Iranian uh, president because of fears that the United Arab Emirates, as we have been clearly saying, have been working with uh, the Israelis to train these, uh, these militants there that have carried out these attacks. Uh, also, I was uh, told, though, that the, uh, the, the, that the United Arab Emirates would work uh, 
uh, said that they would verify they verify the attack being from the guys we thought were responsible, but uh, but he insisted uh, that these uh, that these guys believe they operate on behalf of ISIS, and when in fact they just executed a plan of uh, the Mossad, and that they would uh, they're basically they're going to try to put a stop to those attacks that are happening on Iranian interests there. Uh, around the region there, both in the, uh, the Red Sea as well as the Persian Gulf. So that's kind of interesting to see that right there, see how that all plays out. Uh, the Middle East, of course, is very volatile. We know President Trump uh, has said before that uh, if Iran ever threatened the United States again, they would, of course, have uh, m more on their hands than they know what to do with. Uh, International Middle, Middle East I-24 is reporting the Syrian government troops enter a key northern city of Manbij, uh, according to the state media there, uh, just like a truckload of guys to me, but anyway, I'm sure that uh, if the Syrian military is entering in there. Uh, we have heard reports that the Syrian military have made agreements with uh, the Kurdish fighters and that they are going in that area. Syrian regime troops entered the key Syrian city of Manbij. State news agency Sana said Monday after Damascus deployed troops to the country's north to contain a days-long Turkish offensive. A local official in Manbij controlled by a military council linked to the Kurdish administration confirmed that troops had entered into Manbij and deployed on the front lines. The Syrian army had dispatched a limited number of troops around the Manbij last year at the request of Kurdish forces to protect the area from feared Turkish assault. But the latest deployment is most significant by Damascus since uh, it withdrew from the city in Aleppo province in 2012. So... Uh, that may help slow this uh, movement down, but it's not going to change what the objective was, and that was to free those ISIS militants. Also, joint Russian airstrikes uh, with Syria uh, destroyed the, uh, the jihadist command center in Idlib. That's according to the uh, uh, Amman News there uh, coming out of the Middle East there, said that uh, the Syrian Air, Russian Air Force carried out several airstrikes in uh, Arba'in mountain region of Idlib last night, hitting a number of jihadist targets near the city of uh, Ahara. Uh, a, Sputnik, a Sputnik news field source has now revealed what the Syrian and Russian air forces were targeting in Idlib. The joint Russian air aircraft carried out before midnight on Sunday a series of airstrikes on sites belonging to the HTS gunmen and Jabal al-Arabian south of Idlib. The source said that the reconnaissance planes were able to detect the movements of the HTS gunmen when they were working to transport shipments of weapons, ammunition, and logistic equipment towards the uh, sites of the Arabian Mountain region. Those of you that know before when uh, these uh, command centers were hit, it also uh, contained in the past, not now, but contained in the past uh, CIA, Mossad agents, uh, uh, Qatarian agents, as well as Saudi agents in those uh, bunkers. So I'm just curious to see if we have anything else like that going on. This was interesting as well, and I wanted to share this with you. ABC News falsely reported a firing range um, uh, here in the United States, I believe it was in Kansas uh, is where this was at, uh, as an actual attack going on in Syria. Well, oddly enough, I was speaking with John Moore on the phone earlier. Uh, actually, I think it was yesterday we were speaking on the phone. And he was actually at this firing range. And he was telling me, he said, do you know anything about it? He gave it a particular name. He says, do you know anything about that type of a range? I said, no. He says, well, what we do, we take a bunch of 55-gallon drums filled with fuel and then uh, strap, I think it's dynamite to it or something like that. And then uh, they put glow sticks on them. And he said it's a fully automatic machine gun firing range. He said, and when the countdown goes, those that are on the firing line all aim for the glow sticks. He said, of course, it goes up in a massive ball of fire, which uh, makes some interesting fireworks. Uh, and then I come to find out, not long after John had shared that with me, it found out that ABC News was reporting it in this manner. Listen in. This video right here appearing to show Turkey's military bombing Kurd civilians in a Syrian border town. The Kurds who fought alongside the U.S. against ISIS. Now horrific reports of atrocities committed by Turkish backed fighters on those very allies. Oh, this video right here. Now here's what's funny. Right there at this very moment. Uh, you may guys may not be able to see it as well as I can on my screen here. 
the range is, is lit up. You can see all the spectators there that are, that are at there. And you can actually see the firing range itself where they're firing the weapons from. Uh, Here and you show turkeys milling. If someone had just paid a little bit more closer attention, maybe they could have realized that, but who knows? Who knows who sent this to them or why they believe that? Um, but yeah, you don't really expect Terry, a regular bombing firing lane, firing range to have this type of uh, spectacle going on. But you can actually see, at least on my end here, I can see even the 55-gallon drums that John was telling me about. Uh, he just gave me the graphic report of it, so I thought, yeah, it probably would be a, certainly a, a show of fireworks. But ABC News actually... Civilians in a Syrian border town. The Kurds who fought alongside the U.S. against ISIS. And then, of course, ABC News reported it like that. Uh, uh, there again, there's another one, another view there. You guys may not be able to see it, but right up in here is where they're shooting their guns from. Uh, you can actually see the heads of the people. Stand, there's like a guy standing right here, several people. They're just kind of like spectators watching it. It's kind of like a fireworks show uh, at a firing range just done at nighttime. So it's kind of interesting because when I saw this came out on Twitter, I'm thinking to myself, well, John just told me about this on Sunday uh, that he was actually at the event when they, when they actually did this. And I don't know if it was Saturday night or when they actually did it, but it ended up making the ABC News as a slaughter of the Kurds in Syria. Well, I guarantee you one thing, if the Kurds had been in a place like that, yeah, they would have been slaughtered, no doubt about it. But it was not. It was not. And that's kind of interesting that we knew about that. Uh, anyway, I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Don't forget to support the broadcast. Uh, we appreciate your support and what you do to keep this broadcast going. And uh, we'll be talking to you later more this week as well. Uh, a lot of actually thing, interesting things going on. So, and by the way, just to share with you as well, the prayers that you guys made. I got a report back from the sister that I asked you to pray for uh, the other day. And she said that right when we, when you guys were praying for her, she, she clicked, clicked onto the news. She had a lot of pain that night and uh, said when the people prayed, she said something just came over her and that pain left her completely and she was able to sleep that night. So anyway, God bless our sister. We... Uh, she's, from what I understand, doing a very good recovery, so we thank God for that. And uh, and hopefully, too, before too long, I'll get, uh, Yana, we'll get back in here and do another chat. We're uh, trying to work on some other issues right now, preparing some things for you and some things that will be coming out here in a, in a Steve and Yana chat very soon. And also trying to get ready to send out our mailer, our mailer, uh, which will be going by uh, postal mail, those that support the ministry by U.S. Postal, as well as some of those that I've also added to that list from things that I've received. And again, if you've sent your, your mailing address and you don't get something, just understand. It takes time. It's just the two of us, so it takes time to enter all that, all that information in. Shalom, shalom. In a world of aim, shalom. There is no peace.